Hi and welcome back and great to see you again. Today, as announced, we're talking about the inverter from Victron. I got a Phoenix 12 375. For a 12 volt system, I also got the data sheets to understand what this 375 version, what is capable of. It has a peak power of 700 watts, constant watt of 300 or 260. There's a continuous power difference when it's about, and here it comes, 25 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit below here. Uh, you can get continuously 300 watts with this inverter and when you have 40 degree outside, the Fahrenheit also down here, it's about 260 watts. I think that's very important, especially when we size our cable for that. So this is full disclosure. I'm not an expert, I'm just trying this out. I wanna see how this inverter incorporates with the whole Victron components. How does it work? Because it's not one of those smart versions, but it has a VE Direct port where we can connect it to our Raspberry and then just have it fully exposed with all information, all features usually, which will go into the VRM portal from Victron online. I also wanna guide you through that a little bit and show you how that could look like maybe. That means I bought it with my own money. I got this inverter, wanted to test it and want to see how that works. And we are doing that today in my existing system. As you already know, it's a messy system. So I'll take out a couple of components probably to make it more clean. In that case, you can also see how it works. I didn't want to rip off the entire system for today, but I'll do a couple of changes. I'm working with one of those tables, current flow and amps. And since I'm not using the full 700 peak watts, I'm sizing it a little lower. I'm using a eight gauge cable, which means up to 40 amps, which also means in watts, it's about, uh, it's maximum with the 12 volt system, 480 watts. That's maximum I'll pull today, no worse. I'm not pulling more, so I'm stuck with the eight gauge cable. One thing, because I don't, didn't have another one, and the other thing is I just didn't want to test it. So we'll see. We'll do our test, how it incorporates with the whole system, how it connects. I did a little preparation ahead of time. I connected the cables already. But before I talk too much, if you have any comments, any questions, um, please leave it in the comment section. All components I'm using today, I'm putting also in the description in case you're interested in which components I was using. We'll just start with that. I'll give you a little brief overview of what an inverter looks like. The first step we'll do, disconnect everything. This is pretty simple. I have a power oh, kill switch, whatever you want to call it. Next we're going to do just disconnect the raspberry real quick, disconnect the old inverter. I do have one, all right, one original view direct cable, one original one. I have a couple more, as you know, because there you can find how to build your own V direct cable. Just a quick comparison, since the new inverter is bigger than the old one. So the reason why I'm connecting it not to one of the fuses, since this is just a test, and I connected a lux uh, bigger size than uh, I thought about at the beginning, so that's the reason for me connecting it to the outer positions. You're wondering why I have the battery protect in here? It's because of my old HEM battery. I wanted to have a cutoff. Since I'm not having an HEM battery in there anymore, I would probably not need it, especially the Victron battery sense which measures the temperature of the battery itself. So it, it could cut off power if needed, but I still have it in the system, so I don't want to mess with that at the moment. I don't want to take it out because you see, it's so nice connected, right? Why should I Why should I take it out? If you have a reason why I should take it out, because it's not good for a lithium iron phosphate battery, that's a different game, so let me know. Since I basically was watching videos from Will Prowse and other people on YouTube. I learned everything by myself and also did some more research online. Not only online, also read some stuff, asked some colleagues. It's very helpful. Quite interesting what you can do. So I hope I do apply this, this knowledge now correct. If there's something wrong, always feel free to leave some comments and save. Until then, I will continue with my work. And now we'll use one of my DIY cables talked about already, VE Direct Victor cables. And now we have another map. Let's see how it looks like on the website. Here we see our VRM portal from Victron. We see my solar generator T-Box, which is my. Don't register to, to that and don't try to get access to that. Nope, <laughs> it's my box. We can see that the battery is, has an idle state of 100%, which is due to because I turned off entire power, so I have to recharge it to the full capacity that it has 100% again. Um, so that's why we see 13.28 volts right now here in this overview nice i can click on it and then it leads me right to the dashboard but i don't want to do that 
I want to still stay within my installations. And we would theoretically see a load here. And this load information comes from our inverter. So I have nothing connected right now on purpose, but I'll do that now. I'll connect something and I'll see what happens. Raspberry refreshes every, every, every minute, I think. Um, now we see a C load here, which is about 24 watts. When you go into the device list, then we have the battery monitor and that is the smart shunt. I don't know why it's called battery monitor because it doesn't have the monitor or the actual monitor on it. Um, you know, you can buy this little monitor thing and then it's showing you the voltage and all information on that instead of transferring it or transmitting it to the app. But we can see the product is a smart shunt. And then we have the inverter finally, which is a Phoenix inverter 12 volt 375. There we are. That's the one which I connected. That's the one we just saw connecting. That's what it looks like here, which is amazing. And of course, then the dashboard, it depends on how you configure it and uh, how you like it. What's important is the device list. And this is just happening. The inverter is not even smart, considered as a smart unit, which shows up in the app. It only shows up here in the dashboard and will show up in the app as well, because it is connected to Raspberry Pi. So I'll go into the app now as well. Okay, I'm switching to the app now, just that you have also an understanding what that is showing us. And right now, what we can see, because the inverter is not smart, not considered as a smart shot, not considered as a, um, a smart battery sense or um, a battery protect, which is also the smart version which I have. We see five components in here, but we don't see the inverter because it's not a, not a smart inverter. Please keep that in mind, but we can see what's happening because we can see there is an AC load. So it's in, it's transferring information to the Raspberry Pi, which is working as a Serbo, Serbo XGX or whatever they call it. That means that when we click on the smart shunt, we can see that there's a load going out, a current going out, it's minus. And when we click on this Raspberry Pi, which is sadly just giving us the option VRM online portal. So we do not have any visibility into the inverter like we have in the VRM portal, which is kind of a little sad, you know, it's okay. So that means we don't see a lot in the app. So we don't have to continue doing a lot of stuff here in the app. We can though, that is one very interesting thing. Open the remote console and I'll do that now. So whoop, I have to turn the screen and we can see, we can see, that's great. There is at the Phoenix inverter 12 volts, 375. So we can see it in the app, which is connected to the VRM portal. And that means we can click on it as well. So we, we see information. We can even, I think we can even turn off the load right now if we want to. Oop. Looking in the dashboard. We have to give it a second or so until we get a refresh rate again. We still have control on the phone if we want to. We have the same remote console by the way in the VRM portal if you want to open that. Uh, just below here, but you can only access it once. So, yep, there we are. Zero watts. Cool. Let's see if we can turn it back on. And it starts inverting on the app already. And DC is dropping. Great. AC out is increasing. And there it is back. You can see it's discharging. There's a load. All right, cool. That's the app. So, we can see something. What else can we see? I think it's one other thing. I mentioned the remote console. Now we can open it here because I closed it on the phone, but we have the option to open it. Yeah, that's where we left it. I wanna click on device, because that's something which might be interesting for you. So we see connected. Yes, it is connected. Do we have an option to change that? No, but we see the connection. It's USB. And as you remember, it's a VI Direct DIY <laughs> uh, USB cable. So it works, product. It gets all the information. It doesn't have a name. Oh, we could enter one. Oh, that's great. I can't even type. VRM instance and serial number. That's all we need. We cannot click on ACD, uh, on DC, on AC output, on state. There's no option. Just a switch. We could change this little friend to echo. We can change it to echo, but what does it really mean? And here we have the explanation. The inverter will switch to standby when the load decreases below a preset value. Minimum load, 15 watts. That increases the life of the battery. That is not too bad. And there is a physical switch, as you remember, of the inverter. You can set it to echo as well. So this is a soft switch. There's not a lot more because it's not 
you know, it's not like the smart version, but it's still, you can do stuff. You can configure things on the software. You can even do it on your phone, which is nice. You don't have to be on there. You can just install it in your camper van or somewhere else below. And there you can turn it on, turn it off. You maybe have the server GX touch or whatever they call it, or you have just the app. You're good to go to just change settings when you cannot really reach it because it's underneath the car seat or whatever where you installed this inverter. So that's one of the smaller versions and I have not, I've not seen the bigger versions, but what they do have on the website, but what I do have on the website, this nice PDF, which shows us, us what it can do and what it cannot do. And the biggest little friend is about a thousand watts. That is pretty nice. That is all I can show you. And that is all what this inverter can do and how it incorporates in the whole Victron environment and in the VR and portal, especially and in the app. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, you have a couple of questions. If you like videos like that, um, please like the video, please subscribe uh, to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff. And I'm happy to show you more. And uh, as mentioned, there's exciting stuff coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Tschüss.